<clears throat> Good afternoon. My name is Gillian Balaban, and I am Senior Coordinator Governance Relations at GRI. Welcome to this meeting of the Global Sustainability Standards Board, known by its acronym, the GSSB, held on 14 March 2024. This virtual meeting is being this virtual meeting is being hosted from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Please note that all public GSSB meetings are being recorded, and you can find the audio recording on the GSSB meeting webpage, along with high-level summaries of previous GS GSSB meetings. You can also find the slide deck to this meeting on the same page. Present from the GRI Secretariat today is Bastien Butt, Chief of Standards, Claire Dugan, Manager Standards, and Tamar Sil Salstra, Senior Manager Standards. We'll now start with a roll call. Anna Nefedova. Pre Present. Corley LaRue. Present. Chalandra De Silva. Present. Deborah Ing. Present. Ganga Charan Sharma. Present. Julia Genuardi. Present. Ikazuma Okoroba. I'll come back to Ikazuma. Jeff Robertson. Present. Jennifer Princing. Present. Laura Dana Carter. Present. Peter Colley. Present. Rebecca Coriat. Present. Tomu Machiba. Present. And GSSB Chair Carol Adams. Present. Thank you all. It looks like um, Igazuma Okoroba has just dropped off, but she will join again. Um, GSSB member Galia Tisenkova sent her apologies. I will hand over to the chair, Carol Adams, to open the meeting. Uh, thank you very much, Gillian, and welcome, everybody. And the first item on the agenda is to approve the summary of our meeting held on the 16th of January, 2024. Um, are there any corrections to that summary? Okay, hearing of none, I will um, take it that everybody is happy with that summary and that is therefore approved. Thank you. And then we are going to take item three. So the next slide, please. And Claire is going to speak to that briefly. Welcome, Claire. Thanks, Carol. And good day, everyone, members of the GSSB. Um, a very minor item from the financial uh, services project today from the sector team. Uh, we're just proposing to substitute one member of the insurance technical committee um, with a new member. So this has come about because a member from the business um, enterprise constituency has had to resign from the process for personal reasons. They're leaving their current position and cannot continue to take part uh, in their future plans. <clears throat> and it was quite lucky because we had a very suitable candidate um, from the same constituency and even from the same country who was willing to be nominated, was very excited about the nomination. Um, and we are excited to propose them. They have decades of experience in reporting and regulatory compliance within the insurance sector. So that's the, the proposed item from myself today, and I hand it back to you, Carol. Okay, thank you very much, Claire. Um, so can we approve this change in membership, this new member? Any concerns? No, okay, we'll take that as approved then, Claire. Thank you very much. And so the next item is to go on to um the uh, topic standard project for pollution uh, to approve the final um, proposal tamar would you like to speak to that
Three, we spoke about of the project proposal for um, a topic standards project for and um, this is a slide that uh, we presented then. So in the GSSB work program, um, there is um, the plan to also develop uh, pollution related disclosures. Um, and there are currently uh, dis disclosures that are uh, not, well, they're part of a standard, but they're a bit surrounded by black text, or in the future, they will be surrounded by black text. So uh, it seemed to make sense to, to uh, um, uh, revise these, these uh, disclosures uh, and create a project that is um, uh, for uh, uh, pollution related disclosures. So we will look to align them with recent developments and uh, relevant authoritative um, intergovernmental instruments. Uh, additionally, to the revision of the uh, identified disclosures, uh, we will also look at whether we need to identify new topics. Um, it could be plastics, critical incident management as a broader topic, um, and management of hazardous chemicals. Just push this button. Yeah. So the status where we are is that we've presented the um, presentation uh, of the, uh, well, we've presented a draft proposal during the GSSB meeting of uh, the 16th of January of this year. Um, and then an opportunity was provided uh, to get feedback from the Stakeholder Council and the Supervisory Board until February 9th, which was, was open for three weeks. And this is part of the due process protocol. Um, and we've received one comment, so I will speak about that in a little bit. And then um, currently, um, well, today, uh, we're presenting uh, and discussing uh, the second draft proposal and hopefully for approval. But of course, this is, this is a decision that can be taken at the end. Um, so, um, the project proposal has two themes. One theme is emissions to air, soil and water. And this includes the revision uh, of two disclosures that are non-GHG emissions uh, to air uh, that are not part of the climate change projects. So, it's uh, a disclosure on ozone depleting substances, uh, which is um, also linked to the Montreal protocol, and then there's a, a disclosure on uh, NOx, SOx, and other air emissions. Um, they are currently part of GRI 306 Affluence and Waste 2016, but um, no, that can't be right. No. No. Um, but we will include them in the revision. And then um, there are very various authoritative documents. Uh, mentioned these are the UNICE documents, but they're also UNEP uh, documents. Um, part of it. So, um, so this is one theme in the project, and then there's a second theme. Um, oh well, yeah. So um, uh, emissions to uh, soil. I'll just dive a bit deeper into the uh, project. So for emissions to soil, we currently have. Um, no topic standards disclosures. Maybe some could say, well, spills, significant spills is, is also an emission to soil, which can, which can be, but there's nothing uh, dedicated to soil. There are no uh, international legally binding documents, um, but there is an international network on soil pollution that is part of the um, FAO. Um, so um, that's another topic of emissions to air, water and soil, and then emissions to water. We currently have the uh, water standards uh, and um, part of the scoping will be whether it needs to be uh, revised or not. Uh, or we need to add something or whether it's sufficient for uh, covering uh, emissions to water as part of the pollution project. And then there's theme two, which is uh, critical incident management. Um, this includes significant spills or spills and leaks and emergency response and, and management, um, and also the management of hazardous substances. Um, there is part of the project is um, the disclosure on significant spills. And we, um, there was input from the sector programs um, uh, when they uh, published the um, 
sector standards for oil and gas, coal and mining, where they recommended to broaden uh, significant spills to uh, critical incident management. Um, additionally, there is an authoritative references ref, uh, reference that uh, will has not yet been published, but in the zero draft text um, of the uh, plastics treaty, there is a uh, mentioning of spills, uh, spills of plastics or microplastics. So we, we will also look at that um, to see if it is relevant and how. Um, so the changes to the uh, project proposal that we've made so far um, after the presentation in January uh, is that we um, clarified the information under uh, the theme of critical incident management. So we included a bit more information of why it is broadened um, to critical incident management. This was based on the input from the um, sector standards. Um, We've also added a new process step, which is the alignment between the sector standards and the topic standards. Um, there will be alignments. This was presented last year uh, to the GSSB uh, between the new sectors, uh, topic standards of mining and the topic standards of biodiversity with the sector standards. Um, and this will also be part of once the topic standards for pollution um, are uh, published, we will also look at uh, alignment with the sector standards. Um, then, of course, during the GSSME meeting, we have received other comments, um, but these comments are mostly relevant, seems mostly relevant to scoping. So we will like to include them in the scoping. Um, there was a comment on pesticides and soil pollution, um, there was a comment on um, carbon capture and storage. Uh, there was a comment on um, underground water, ocean, microplastics, and also other pollutants, such as odor, light, noise, which is mentioned in the, in the project proposal. So we were looking to include these in the scoping that we will do, which is the next uh, step. And this is the overview of what we're going to do, what the time frame is going to look like. Um, as you may see, I have added one extra step at the bottom, which is the alignment. Um, and well, the proposal is to, to align all the new uh, topic standards as soon as possible, but then in the first half of a new year. So that's why there's a, a tiny gap between publication and alignment. Um, and alignment will, how long and uh, what the process will look like, will depend a little bit on how much changes we foresee within the sector standards. Um, so um, that is that is a bit of an open end. So it's 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 long, twelve months, we think. Uh, but um, just to be sure, we we kept it at twelve months. Uh, yeah. Any? I don't know if there are any questions or comments. Or happy to hear from you. Um, well, we do have some hands up, which we'll get to. Can you tell us what the feedback was from the stakeholder council? or supervisory board, please? Ah, yes, of course. So uh, the, their comment was, uh, there was one comment, uh, and that was from the labor, uh, a labor, the labor constituency on, to remind us of the process of how to nominate a labor a candidate uh, to the, um, to the uh, working group. Ah, excellent, okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Chilendra, Tomu, I'm sorry, I'm not sure who was first um, out of you two, but it was one of you two, then Anna and then Igazuma. So Chilendra, do you want to go first? Sure. Thanks, Carol. Uh, Tama, just a question almost out of curiosity. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned about the alignment between the topic standard and the, and the sector standards for mining, for example. Uh, I'm just curious to find out whether the pollution uh, standard would call upon a uh, component report under biodiversity as well if 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 it if there was uh, some degree of pollution i just want to see how that linkage would uh, happen or would you just keep it back to gri3 where there is where it will become a material topic as such 
I just want to find out whether there's some degree of uh, calling upon uh, of, say, the biodiversity standard from the pollution standard. Yeah, this is a very, very good question because we recently published the biodiversity standard and among the drivers, there is a, a mentioning of pollution um, and um, pollution um, that is a fairly broad topic, but it, in some instances, it for, uh, references, for example, the emissions to air, the non-GHG emissions to air. So it references to existing standards, but it doesn't always. So during the development of the um, uh, uh, of this of these standards, we will also look at the existing uh, topic standards uh, to see what is there and how to uh, make that puzzle. Yeah, that's a very good question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and let me and go next. Tommy, I yeah, yeah. I, I think two questions, and uh, yet soil pollution. Is, I I think it's important. Uh, it's maybe I have made the same question last time, but how do you distinguish soil pollution and the underground water yeah. pollution? And yeah. the second one is you talk about plastic pollution, and but I really don't understand why you mention as a part of critical incident. It's more, you know, plastic pollution is a regular pollution. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so soil versus underground water. This is a very good question. Um, I, 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 um, I don't think it is part of the water standard, but please bear with me. I would have to double check. Uh, but of course, when it is underground water, it would go to the underground via soil. I mean, yeah, this is, so um, we do have to look into, into that, yeah. And how that relates to each other and affects underground water, yeah. That was one question. I don't know, Thank yeah, it's, a, uh, it's an open-ended answer. I don't have a very specific answer for it, but I, I, I thank you for flagging it so that we can uh, also take it into consideration we're looking at um, the scoping. And then the second Ooh, question, Thank you. Yeah, it's the, your, your second question was on critical incident management. So critical incident management is part of this project as per recommendation. Uh, well, um, so spills and leaks is part of this project uh, because it's a, a leftover, let's say, disclosure. Um, and uh, a spill is related to pollution. And then there was a recommendation from the sector standards uh, to um, broaden significant spills to a broader topic of uh, critical incident management. Uh, and so we have taken on that recommendation. We've also looked at the uh, PCP comments. Uh, which asked the question on hazardous substances and it asked questions or had comments on Can anyone hear? Tomorrow. Yes, Tamara. I, I, I lost the audio there. there. Oh. Can you hear us now? I'm sorry. Yes, yes. I, yes, you're back. Okay. You're back. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so I think I may have been... Um, uh, I was answering the a critical incident management question from Tomu, so I'll, I'll just quickly repeat. So, so significant spills is a leftover from um, another standard um, and uh, this leftover uh, 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 is included in uh, the this project because it a, a significant spill can be polluting uh, and then um, there was a recommendation from the sector uh, standards project uh, program um, when they developed several uh, sector standards and published them they uh, uh, review, reviewed public comments and uh, have some recommendations to topic standards. 
um, which the rec one of the recommendations was to broaden significant spills to critical incident management. And then during the PCP, there were also comments re uh, received on emergency preparedness and response and management of hazardous substances. So these are also included in this theme. And we need to see how we will include it in um, the standards. So this is also part of the scoping. Oh, I wish I could just give you the final answer. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. My, my question is whether plastic pollution fits. Oh, plastics. Yes. Okay. So plastic is a good one because we, um, I mean, there will be a future project on circular economy, and uh, I can imagine that this is uh, this this future project is very relevant to plastics pollution because it's uh, uh, um, it's part of packaging and product and then the waste uh, is not disposed of properly um, so the thinking of circular economy can be can contribute to uh, combating that type of pollution um, and but then in the treaty which is not finished yet there is a next meeting in April and we need to see what what, what, what will come out of it um, but there are, there is, for example, a clause on significant spills or spills in that um, in that treaty, and also something on emissions. But under the emissions uh, uh, clause, there is five different options of of uh, yeah text that could eventually come into the treaty. So it's really an open ended uh, yeah. It's, it's still a question mark of how. To include it, but because of the spills, um, mm. I've mentioned it as part of that theme. But yeah, it, yeah, we need to see. Uh, thank you, Anna. Yeah, I have a question related to the critical incident management. I, I still struggle a bit with how this could relate to the occupational health and safety topic standard and. To me, it feels like the fit there is more natural because the health and safety management systems are often run as this EHS, so the environmental uh, component is there. I know it's not how we have the the current topic standard designed, but I, uh, I I'm not sure that it fits perfectly into the into the new topic standard that we're developing. Um, and th that's my probably bigger question. And my smaller question um, is about how, how you name the theme. It's the emissions to air, soil, and water. Is, is emissions the right word? Or should we talk about pollution to, to air, soil, and water? I struggled with correlating emissions to soil, um, but that's minor choice of word, I think. Yeah, no, it's a very good point because we had a discussion about this internally, like what, what would be a better proposal. Um, so for um, OHS uh, and critical incident management in the sector standards, um, for example, oil and gas and coal, they combined asset management and critical incident management. And it's a bit broader because it also affects um, the people living in the surrounding of uh, where the critical incident happens, for example, or um, the environment, um, and not only how it affects workers, but during the um, development and research of critical incident management, um, yeah, I, I would think that we would have to look at the OHS standard and keep an eye on that one as well to make sure that they match Right, that they that you can uh, report on them uh, if you need to um, together, but because of how now the sector standards are uh, organized and how they recommended uh, this, we said to um, keep them uh, follow that recommendation. Of course, if you if the GSSB feels we should do it differently, we're happy to take on any. Uh, recommendations or decisions on this um, and then the name emissions yeah I, I thank you for that question it's a good point because when we were doing researching for pollution we also looked at uh, for example definitions of pollution and pollutants and then you come into the realm of okay but um, when is something pollution and when is it an emission um, and so emission is a bit more neutral 
um, and it doesn't say when it's polluting or pollution. Uh, so uh, we, I mean, in the current disclosure for the em uh, other emissions to air, it doesn't ask for a threshold, for example, or um, uh, when you can and cannot uh, report on it. It's, it's just you do your materiality assessment and then, okay, this, is, this topic is material to, to us. So that's why we, we thought emissions would be a better fit. Thank you. Ikazuma. Thank you. Um, my, my question is just has to do with whether the scoping exercise, because I think I did see that there was no authoritative reference apart from one from agriculture, I guess, for the emissions to soil. So my question is around whether you have considered uh, perhaps the IUCN, that's um, any materials, I think they have some materials from the International Union of Conservation of Nature, because for um, the mining sector, for instance, I think there could be some practices um, related to or, you know, on the implications of raw material to soil relationships for conservation. So I don't know whether um, these are materials that you want to look at because um, the reference, the authoritative reference you have cited for the agriculture sector might actually leave out some of the considerations that are important for mining industry. Yeah, uh, thank you for that. No, absolutely. We should, uh, IUCN was also used for the development of the biodiversity standard. Uh, so it's, it's it, it, that organization uh, will, can definitely have relevant information and, and we will also look broader at um, uh, at these documents. But yeah, we, we say, ah, oh, well, GRI standards are based on authoritative references. So that was the first uh, research that we did. But yeah, thank you for that suggestion. Yeah. Thank you. And Rebecca. Hi, thank you. I think my question has already been asked, but I just wanted to to um, to share it again regarding uh, pollution linked to to, to plastic. Um, mm -hmm. Can you? I am not a hundred percent convinced that the 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 approach that has been taken, and I'm reading from line seventy seven, uh, the pollution linked to the circular economy i.e. plastic packaging that has not been correctly processed as waste, as waste but ends up in nature, uh, will not be part of this project scope. Uh, can you share with us again the rationale for this? Yeah. Um, pollution is a very broad term. Um, and um, some would uh, consider... Um, circular economy, for example, or plastics pollution as, as part of the topic of pollution. Uh, but we have, um, because it's the same words, yeah. So, um, and plastic pollution is really in that, uh, has a lot of attention because of its impacts. Um, but we have a future project. I mean, I've added the, the, the example was added to, to clarify that there is a future project on circular economy and circular economy can contribute to uh, as a solution to pollution. So the example that was added um, was just to to show that um, when you redesign <clears throat> your product and take out uh, any plastics that is part of the product product, um, then you contribute to. Uh, uh, eliminating pollution, um, uh, but you would report it under the, or it would be part of the future project on circular economy, which is a separate project according to the GSSB work program. But it's, it's yeah, it's not very uh, because, yeah, clear. Yeah, because if, if as you are redesigning your products, I, my view and advice would be that that redesign also needs to include something that then eventually avoids uh, plastic pollution at the end of the life of the of the product. And yeah. whilst 
I agree there's an element of circular economy. I wonder if some of that needs to be brought into uh, this particular um, project you have presented for pollution. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. It's. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You. You pinpointed something. Uh, yeah. We are, we're still also trying to to better understand where does the circular economy product that is a revision of the materials and waste standards where does it start and end in the future project uh, project. Um, yeah. You could also have a plastic product uh, that emits. Um, during the life cycle, um, uh, but maybe before it goes to waste, uh, that emits uh, plastics or microplastics. So yeah, we really need to figure out where where does one end and where does the other start. So thank you for flagging that. Yeah, it's a good question. Thank you. And we have some comments um, in the chat from uh, Peter Corley and Tomu about critical. Um, incidents and and what about microplastics, but I think these can be taken up um, through the scoping exercise. Did anybody have any issues uh, as concern that would um, that they thought couldn't be dealt with that way? I don't think so. No. So if we could move on to the next slide, please. And can we approve this? Um, project proposal then with um, the knowledge that these comments have all been taken on board and will be considered through the um, through the project as it progresses. Okay, thank you. We'll take that as approved. Um, thank sorry, you all Carol. very much and thank you. Sorry, yes. I, sorry, I, I didn't better. click too quickly. Um, you've mentioned approve the project with the understanding that the comments will be considered during the project. Just wondering how often will we get updates for this particular project? And can we get specific commentary on the questions that have been put to the technical group? Good point, uh, yeah. yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. Can we get some responses? Thank you. Excellent. So we'll get those uh, brought to us um, yep. as uh, as and when you can do that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, there were some there were some issues that certainly need to be to be dealt with there. Bastian. Yeah, I think we can record an action that we will provide an update on the scoping exercise that we're now undertaking based on the approved um, uh, project proposal and that we will bring that back before we start actually um, publicly advertising the project, uh, looking for experts and all of that. I think that needs to be done first so that you are also behind the scope. Excellent. Um, if Thank there you. are members, if there are members from the GSB who would like to uh, assume a role as a project sponsor, that's 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 also, of course, always very welcome. Uh, um, uh, feel free to be in touch with us, and then I we can look at the modalities of that. I, I think there is some strong interest in this, so I would expect <laughs> I would expect some people to be in touch with you there. Thank you, Bastian. Um, Okay, so with that, we'll um, we'll uh, approve the project proposal, and we'll, we'll get an update um, on the responses to those points that have been made. Thank you. And if we could go on to the next slide, please. I think this is now. Is there any other business for the public session before we move into our private session? No. Okay. Thank you. We'll close the pri private session then. Thank you. Sorry, close the public session. <laughs>